merchandising, merchandising. Go to teespring.com and make sure you get you a good t-shirt. It's where the real money's made on YouTube. Not on the AdSense or all the Patreons. We need you to go and buy a shirt. That way we're no longer poor. And we're back. All flash, no substance. I, I, I can still hear many in my ear right now. So, this week's top five, I was really thinking about the fact that I've been locked inside the house for over a month and how claustrophobic and isolated that I feel. And as I'm watching movies, I realize that those themes are basically kind of a genre right now where uh, people locked away somewhere and not being able to get out from whatever the force may be is something that really is kind of being reiterated over multiple films. So this week's top five is going to be the top five confined, uh, isolated, trapped, stuck, whatever. I mean, I'm still working on the title on this. I'm still workshopping it. So if you, whatever the title that's on the video, that's what I went with. We're, we're going to go with that. All right. So my number five, number five, since I'm the only one here, I have to do both things. All right. So my number five is going to be Silent House, Silent House. Now, this film actually takes place with a young woman who's inside of a house where attackers come inside the house and she has to be extremely quiet and she's kind of running around the house and can't get out because they're blocking her exits and looking for her and she has to make as least amount of noise as possible. One of the great technical aspects of this movie is that it's all one shot. All one shot before 1917 and yes I know that there are other films that did one shot scenes but this one was a full movie done in one shot which was really really great and it heightened the, the fear factor and the stress level because you felt like you were her or you were walking her path uh, so it was a great thing to add to a thriller and I thought it made it a perfect film for what it was. Alright, so that's going to bring my number four. Number four! Number four is going to be The Mist. Uh, the Mist is a movie based on the Stephen King book, The Mist, uh, where there is a town where a mist descends onto it, and things are in this cloud of mist, monsters, demons, whatever you want to call them, uh, attacking all the townspeople, but they can't see them as they're walking through this dick thick, through this thick mist, sorry. Um, so that they run back to the grocery store and kind of hold up in there, but they do realize that eventually they're going to have to leave and deal with this uh, outside of the store. So it's one of those films where it's uh, like a Dawn of the Dead zombie film, which it's not on my list. I'm sorry, Manny. It's not on my list. But it kind of follows that kind of format where like, hey, we have everything we need to survive, but you do realize eventually we got to leave and we kind of have to deal with that situation. But The Mist is a great one. It's not like a lot of Stephen King books don't make great movies. I mean, some don't, but this one was one of the good ones. All right, so that's going to bring me to my number three. So number three, I went with The Devil. So we're going to scale this down a little bit as far as the confinement and isolation. Uh, the, this movie is about uh, a few people stuck on an elevator that loses power. Now, in a nutshell by itself, that's scary because if you have claustrophobia, this movie's playing on that. If you just don't like being in that close distance of people, social distancing. Make sure you keep up your social distancing. So if you don't like to be around people like that, the fact that you can't get out of the elevator uh, brings up a certain level of fear factor to this movie. Now you throw in the devil or a demon. Now, I don't know how you really want to put it, but you throw that into it. This movie's over the top scary. Um, it does do a lot of things where like turning the lights on and turning the lights off uh, affects your the, the different state that goes in this film where you're like analyzing the people themselves, but then you're also wondering, can you see enough uh, in that little tight confined spot to know what's going on and it makes you really use your imagination especially putting you in the spot and how you would deal with the things that unfold in the film all right so that's gonna bring my number two number two i, I got one got away from me a little bit but number two is gonna be the shining another stephen king book i feel like i should have just made a stephen king top five list now that i'm thinking about it but maybe next week all right <laughs> so the shining uh takes place with a uh, a family that goes to a hotel uh, to be the caretakers for it over the winter season. So because the roads are closed, they can't leave this hotel and they have to deal with everything that's going on in this hotel. Creepy as hell stuff that goes on this hotel, so much so that it starts to affect the husband who then takes it out as, as a kind of form of possession, takes it out against his family and they can't leave because they have nowhere to go. So this movie's great, it's an all time great film. Yes, I did put it at number two, and you can at me on that one if you want to, or put it in the comments below. I really don't care. It's still going to stay at my number two. All right. So, number one! All right, so here's where you guys are really going to blow up. Maybe Manny. 
will believe this one or maybe you won't take it as number one. But it is a great film on its own or within the context of a shared universe uh, or at least a trilogy that this movie kind of got shoehorned into. And that is 10 Cloverfield Lane. Now, 10 Cloverfield Lane is technically the sequel, quasi-sequel, to the original Cloverfield, uh, Cloverfield movie. Uh, but this one takes place further outside of the city where they don't really know what's going on. They do know something has happened and you have a group of individuals uh, locked inside of a bunker underground not wanting to leave that bunker to see if the stuff is still going on or if what they've been told to get into the bunker was, uh, was a lie or the truth to begin with. So I love this movie about that pre about that premise being set. Uh, do you want to believe that the people with you, that you're here, or do you need to verify this with your own eyes and maybe expose yourself to whatever the dangers are above ground? So go out and see this film. There are another films like um, A Quiet Place that were supposed to be quasi tie-ins to this. I would have liked it if they kept that and made this the complete trilogy of Cloverfield, Ten Cloverfield Lane, and um, excuse me, A Quiet Place. Uh, that would have been a great trilogy, but this one right now stands as the best of the sequels, because there's another sequel on Netflix, uh, of the Cloverfield kind of universe. There you go. All right, so that's going to deal with my whole top five. Uh, I do want to go over some honorable mentions. There were a lot of honorable mentions for me to talk about, so uh, I was just going to run through them briefly because there's a lot of things where you just can't leave. Uh, 1402, another Stephen King-based book, uh, book-based movie. Uh, where somebody's lot or somebody's kind of inside of a hotel room and they're dealing with all of the paranormal things that are going on in the room. It's a great film. You should watch that one, especially if you're kind of like in the horror demon paranormal vibe. That's a good one to watch. Uh, another one to watch is uh, The Cube. Uh, there's these prisoners or people that have been kidnapped in places out of a cube and they have to figure out how to get out of the cube, but they just end up going to other rooms within the cube. I mean, it's a crazy film. It's a dated film as far as what the visuals go, so be expecting that. But the film itself and the storyline, uh, it really kind of takes you on a journey and you like really like, what is it going to take to get out of it? The uh, 127 hours, you don't get more isolated than being stuck under a boulder, right? Uh, I also had Snowpiercer. Snowpiercer by Chris Evans himself, locked on a train, can't get out, because if you get out, you will freeze and die. So uh, they're social grouped. They're starting at the back of the train, and the social groups get better as they go up, and he wants to get to the front of the train to see who's doing this, and maybe they can possibly get off the train. And uh, I guess lastly, I had uh, The Purge. The Purge. I mean, it's kind of an overnight quarantine, but, I mean, it is a quarantine, right? Oh, and The Boy. Manny will love that one. The Boy. They're, they're, stuck, in a, they're stuck in a house. They can't leave because uh, they're, they're really kind of cut off from civilization. So, all right, so that's all I got for my top five list. I would love to see what you guys come up with your top five list. I remember if you don't like what I got, like it's two in one, then at me in the comments. I will look at it, but will not change my list. It's, it's not happening. Uh, but also put your list together so I can read yours and we can maybe discuss about what you guys have for your top five. Uh, hopefully Manny will do a follow-up to this video and we'll see that coming forward, obviously. Uh, but. Uh, until then, make sure you hit the subscribe button, the subscribe button, as well as the notification button, so that way you're aware of all the other top five videos that will soon be coming out, as well as all the other things that we do on the channel as well. So, with that being said, you guys take care. Wait, guys, are you still here? I'm glad you're still here. All right, so if you look down, I mean, it's somewhere over here. Look down. We actually have a Patreon. So if you guys watch the show and you really like what we want to do and you want to help support the show and you want to help me get an editor so I can get to sleep at night because I'm really tired and you guys see all my mistakes in the episodes. So please go to patreon.com forward slash the goods. Give us a penny. Give us a nickel. Give us a dollar. Tell Just us. don't give us the finger. Don't do that. But make sure you do donate something because we do have some giveaways. There's posters. There's t-shirts. There's I'll uh, sign something for you. Exactly. So uh, take a look, guys, and uh, help us out. We appreciate it.